Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo, and today we will be taking a look at the advanced features that's a part of Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. Now to get inside of these settings is quite simple. Just go right inside of your settings menu. You'll scroll halfway down this menu, and in the middle, that is where you see advanced features. Now the advanced features is a really fun menu to play with to change features and settings, such as your side key, if you want it to be acting as Bixby or the power button, calling and texting on other devices, the screen share sharing, screenshots, motions and gestures, and so much more. So this first one that we will cover is going to be side key. Now the side key also acts as your fingerprint reader. Now, when you first get the phone, it will be used with that press and hold, which normally most people is used to it being that power off menu. Now out of the box, it is set up for Wake Bixby. So if you do try to shut off your phone for the first time, you'll actually hit that, that side key button and volume down to get inside of that power off menu, or just go inside of these settings here for side key and switch it to power off menu, something that you're a little bit more comfortable using. Now, when it comes down to the double press of this side key, AKA the power button, you can have it open up your camera, you can open Bixby, or you can even open up any other application on your phone. Now, I'm gonna leave it there for that quick camera launch. It's a way that you're able to double press that side key, opens your camera, and you're able to get that shot that you're looking for. Now, this next category will be Bixby Routines. Bixby Routines is a way you're able to automate your phone. And it's doing this in certain scenarios. So maybe you arrived at school and you wanted to do this, this, and this. And then maybe the moment that you get home, then it's gonna turn off this, but then turn on these other two things. And maybe if you go to a movie theater, maybe the moment you activate that little Bixby routine, it's able to bring your, your volume of your phone down to vibrate. It'll bring your brightness down to 10%. And then it's gonna turn your phone to do not disturb. Now, if you have never played with Bixby routines before, it's one of those things that I highly suggest just to play around with, just to see if it's something you like. Now, this next category is one of my favorite menus inside of advanced features. It's the call and text on other devices. Now, I know that there is some carriers out there that might block this. So if you have an AT&T phone, you might not see this option, or maybe it was added in. But if you do get this phone unlocked, this will definitely be sitting there. It's a way that you're able to respond and receive, start conversations with either your cell phone or your tablet, all linked with this phone number and synced with the Samsung account. So if I don't have my cell phone with me and I had this thing turned on, everything was all linked and synced up, then I'm able to use my tablet to answer phone calls, start a phone call, answer text messages, and also start one. Now this next one is linked to Windows. This is another way that you can have this thing synced up, but this time with your computer. And it's pretty cool. You're able to check out uh, texts and notifications, and you're able to check out your recent photos and everything else. Uh, it's not as full and in depth as what I would like. Hopefully it is in the future, uh, but you know, linked to Windows is one of those things that will definitely come in handy if you're in a workspace and you just wanna have your cell phone sitting off, but you can actually get access to all of your text messages right on your computer screen. Now, the last thing I wanna say with this call and text on other devices, if we were to go back to this one, just make sure that you are using Samsung messages. If you use Google messages, this will not be able to sync up, just as a heads up. Now you also have Smart Pop-Up View. Smart Pop-Up View is a way that you're able to get a small little bubble popping up and then you can open it up in a small screen. So this way, if you wanna turn it on for your messages, what'll happen is if somebody was to send you a text message, you'll see a tiny screen pop up rather than you overtaking the entire phone. So if you're watching YouTube, automatically this will be set up in a smaller display. So it's one of those really fun things you're able to play with with smart pop-up view. This is also the setting here where if you notice that really any of these applications, if something pops up in a small bubble and you're wondering how the heck do I get rid of this bubble, uh, it's very similar to uh, Facebook Messenger. That is the setting you go to to actually turn it off. Oh, and if you guys are brand new here at the channel of Jimmy is Promo and you guys love tips, tricks, tutorials about your Samsung Galaxy devices and also seeing things early, make sure you hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications so you get notified for all future videos. Now this next category is going to be your screenshots and screen recorder. This first one will be that screenshot toolbar. It's that little toolbar that pops up anytime that you take a screenshot. This thing should definitely always be on. I believe it's on right out of the box. 
If it is not, make sure you turn this thing on. It's a way that you're able to crop and scroll and add tags and everything else anytime that you take a screenshot. Next up is a way that you're able to hide the status and navigation bars, which is really nice if you are taking the screenshot and you don't need to have all that stuff on the top and some of really anything on the bottom, then you're able to get everything hidden there. So definitely get that one turned on as well. Now, this is another one that you're able to toggle if you want your, your recent screenshots to be deleted automatically the moment that you actually hit that share button. And it's one of those nice things to do. It's a way that maybe sometimes you just wanna share something off right away and you don't want it to clutter your gallery. And then this one is when you take a screenshot, do you want to save it as a JPEG or a ping? A JPEG will be your best option. Now for the screen recorder, this is where you can change a bunch of things here. Uh, you can do it to where it doesn't take any sound. You can record the media sounds, or if you wanted to record the media sound, which is whatever app or game you're playing, along with the mic. Now I highly suggest not to do that one just because the mic will actually pick up more of the media sound and actually make it sound a little distorted. So what I would say is that if you are recording something and you want sound, you might as well just go with that media sounds right there. And then you can also have your video quality if you want it to be 1080p, 720 or 480. And then that selfie video, if you want to see, you know, your own video uh, in the size, then you're able to change how big or how small this is. And you are also able to turn that off. Heading back to the advanced features screen, this is where we have direct share. So direct share is when any time that you take a screenshot or any time that you hit a share button, then it's gonna show up those last few people that you shared with. And it's really cool because if you send uh, your mom a text message, then you sent a buddy something through Hangouts, and then somebody else through Messenger, it'll actually show all three of those on the very top and in that application you recently used. So if you share a lot of things, direct share is one of those things to definitely toggle on. Now this next one is a way that you're able to reduce animations. This one's pretty self-explanatory. If you want a few less animations with all the uh, applications that are pre-installed, this is where you're able to toggle that one on. Now, motions and gestures, there's quite a bit in here. This is where you have lift to wake. It's a way to turn on the screen when you pick up your phone. Uh, that's definitely helpful if you're looking at a notification. You also have double tap to wake. So this is where if your phone is shut or if it's open on the Galaxy Z Fold 2, your phone's been sitting for a while, you're able to give it a double tap and then your phone will wake up. Smart Stay is a way that if you toggle this one on, then it'll actually always look for your eyes anytime it's about to time out. So if you have your display timeout to be two minutes, then right before it's about to time out, it's gonna use the camera just to see if you're looking at the phone and if you are, it'll actually stay on for you. So if you're reading a long article, if you're just doing something on your phone, as long as you're looking at it, it'll actually stay on. Smart Alert is one of those settings that's also very helpful. So if you missed any type of notification, if somebody texted you, called you, notification from an application or whatever, then this is where you'd be able to get a small vibration the moment that you pick up your phone next. So this way you know, hey, you just missed something. Easy mute, this is a way that you're able to mute your phone from calls as well as alarms. There's two different ways. Either you can place your palm right over the top or you can just simply put your phone upside down, face down. Then this way it'll stop the ringing. It'll just put it onto mute. And the same thing with any type of alarm. The finger sensor gestures, this is where you can toggle this on and it's a way that you're able to either swipe down or swipe up on that power key, AKA the side key. And it's a way that you're able to pull down the notifications panel. Now, if you are unlocking your phone at that moment in time, the moment it's trying to read, you will not be able to swipe it down, obviously. But once your phone is unlocked, you're able to give this thing right here a little swipe down and then your notifications panel will pop up. You also have palm swipe to capture. So this is a way that you're able to swipe your hand or palm across the screen going from left to right or right to left to take a screenshot. So if you find it to be easier to do that than hitting on your power and volume down, then this is the way that you're able to take a screenshot. Now this one is to swipe to call or send text messages. So when you're inside of your phone or your contacts, all you'd have to do is if you swipe one way, you'll call. If you swipe the other way on that contact, then you'll send a text message. So moving on back, we're gonna head over inside of the one-handed mode. So one-handed mode is a way that you're able to, if the phone is too big, you can switch it to something that is a little bit more reasonable with one hand. So you can do it with a gesture. So you're able to swipe down in the center of the bottom edge of your screen. So right here, once it's on, you can see it went over inside of the one-handed mode. 
Now, when you tap outside of the screen, wherever it's black, then you're able to uh, get it turned right back on. Now, it takes a little bit of practice to get it done uh, the very first time. If you go too high, it just tries to think that you are scrolling. You wanna start on the very bottom, just like that, to get it going. Now, the reason why it's a double tap is because the first time I'm able to change the size of that screen. Now, you do have an option right here for a button, but because I do use the swipe, I don't have the navigation bar on the bottom. To activate one-handed mode, you wanna double tap the home button. So moving right on back, we talked about these two here. You have Game Launcher. Game Launcher is also extremely helpful if you play a lot of games, if you download a lot of games. Uh, this might also be blocked if you have an AT&T phone. So again, always get unlocked. It's always the best option. Game Launcher, it puts all of your games into one screen, one folder, and it also brings you a lot of options of other applications to download. And it has a lot of really cool settings and things to take a look at. Now, here is your dual messenger. So it's a way that you're able to you know, sign up if you have dual accounts on different applications. So even Instagram should pop up, Messenger will pop up, Facebook is already here. So if you have a bunch of uh, different logins, maybe you have a personal and then you also have a professional, this is how you can have dual messenger. Now this one's gonna be video enhancer. This is actually something I personally have to have off uh, when I shoot YouTube videos, when this one is turned on. It actually just over exaggerates the screen. It makes it brighter. I'm not really a big fan of it. I don't need it. But if you need to have a little bit better of a video enhancing, more colors, vivid brightness, then you're able to turn this one on. But again, I always had to turn that off when I shoot YouTube videos. You can already tell right now that this is a white screen uh, and it's really just kind of taken away from the colors that is over here. If I was using dark mode, my table would be a different color. Uh, and that is actually why I also wanted to show white in this video so people can see the cutout and just the bezels and everything else. In dark mode, it's hard to see all of this. Uh, so I put it into uh, non-dark mode just so people can take a look. Look. And then the last one on this list is going to be a way that you're able to send SOS messages. So if you're to turn this one on, it's a way to let people know that you're in a emergency by pressing the power key. So the number of times you can press it, you can either set it for three times, you can set it up for four times. If you feel that three times might be an accident, then you can add one additional, which is four. Now you're able to have it auto call somebody. Uh, it'll also attach photos. It'll attach audio recordings. It'll send location of where you are. So if you are somewhere, you get hurt, maybe you fell, you can't call somebody really, it's hard to speak. Maybe you are in trouble with somebody grabbing you. I don't know, something is happening. Uh, maybe you're a policeman and you are in a situation where you can't pull out your gun, you can't pull out anything, but there's a way that you're able to triple press or quadruple press this button right here. Then you're gonna send a location of, hey, I'm in a situation, it says SOS, I'm in trouble. It has a little bit of an audio recording. It has the location attached so people know where you are and also attach pictures. So maybe you can get an image of something that is around you. So that is really everything that is inside of the advanced features right here. There's a few additional settings on the bottom that you can go into but those are in other screens it's just a way that if you're looking for something else but i hope you guys have liked this video if you guys did please give this thing a huge thumbs up don't forget to hit and subscribe subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side and if you like this video then more than likely you'll also like this video and i'll see you guys later